In this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can take our 3D character inside of ZBrush and actually pose it within the program. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so here we are inside of ZBrush and we have our character and he's set into what would be considered the neutral pose for this character. So all the pieces are sitting on the character and nothing's been posed yet. Let's take a look at uh, something very simple to start off with. So I'm just going to select this staff that you see here. I'm going to hold down Alt and click on that and that should select this in the subtool area. And let's talk about this concept of layers. So it's possible for us to store this pose on a layer that we can turn on and off. So I'll open up layers for this and I've already got a pose on here where I can turn this thing on or off and I'll just show you how we create that. So it matters um, what subdivision levels that you have with this model that you have. This one has seven subdivision levels and it's going to ask you if you make a new layer it wants you to be at the highest subdivision level possible. So you just click this little plus button here and we can give it a name after it's created. So I'll just uh, type name here and then just call this pose and I'll call this O2 like that. So that gives it the name. You can see it's in this recording mode and for us to do any kind of work on this layer, we do need to be in this recording mode. We can click off the recording mode, and that just puts us in this standard where we can turn on the eye icon to turn on and off the pose. And if you want to get back to a layer and enter any kind of recording mode, just click this little button here, and you're back in the recording mode. So we're going to be using the transpose tool for this. This one's really simple because we don't need to mask anything out, so I'll just put it on the move tool. I'll have, go ahead and click and drag out a line. If I hold down shift, I can constrain that line to different angles like this. And we can have symmetry turned on. So if I were to drag out uh, something like this from here and click up like that, if I hit X, you can see we can use symmetry with this thing. We don't really need that for this thing that we're doing here because we're just going to kind of move it straight forward. A little bit so I can just click and drag out and again holding down shift I'm gonna make a straight line like this so with the transpose tool for the move it's possible that we could click and drag this uh, this part of it here and that's going to actually kind of do this weird kind of scale thing but if you want to uh, do a uniform move you just click and drag right in here and that's going to move this thing forward now I have noticed um, I've been getting some odd behavior with uh, the transpose tool, at least in this version for R7, uh, and it seems like it gets confused and thinks there's a mask on something. So if I just mask a part of this, like this one, holding down control and dragging it on here, and then I'll go ahead and hold down control and click off of it, and then I use the move tool, it seems to uh, fix any kind of issue that there was. You saw there were some pieces that were not moving around with it and uh, I think that seems to be fixing the issue for me. So I'm just going to move it over to the side here. So again, I just took my camera, hold down shift, and then snapped it here. And then I can click and drag out a new action line while holding down shift, and I can click and drag this thing here. So if you click and drag, you can move freely. If you hold down shift, it's going to constrain that motion along the line that you've drug out here. So I'll hit undo real quick and I can change this angle here. We can grab this thing and if you hold down shift again you get that functionality where it snaps to those increments like this. It's possible you can drag the line around too if you want. You could drag, uh, sorry, I guess you can. You can drag this uh, circle here to move the entire line and you could drag this circle to change this, uh, this area over here. And again holding down shift is going to constrain that. So if I take this and hold down shift and put it at this vector that you see here and I click and drag this middle piece and holding down shift you can see it's going to constrain that motion for us. So I'll hit undo for that right there and we'll go ahead and take a look at this. We'll take it out of the uh, recording mode and now you can see we can turn this on and off for this. Um, when it's turned on like this, you do have this possibility to drag this slider and you can get um, you know, a value in between this thing here. So this one works pretty well because we're just moving from one location to the other. So I can go half the distance of this thing and you can see I can push this right here like that. I'll put this back at 1 
and um, just leave it right there for that. So that's probably the most simplest uh, way of actually taking something and moving it. So let's go ahead and take a look at something a bit more complicated. So we're actually going to choose the uh, character that you see here. I'm going to open up the subtool area right here. You can see we've got the character selected. I only want to work with this thing right now, so I'm going to hide everything. So I can hold down shift and click on this eye icon, and it's going to hide everything else except for the body. And what I want to do is actually um, work on the lowest subdivision level that I have for this. So the posing thing does work a bit better with the subdivision levels because you can drop it down. I'm going to hit shift D to drop down to the low subdivision levels like this. And I can work with this model, which is a lot simpler to kind of work with, with masking and everything else that we're going to be looking at. And then when I'm done posing it, you just have to tap D to step up in your subdivision levels and whatever that new pose is, your high res sculpt will follow this new position that you have for this. But again, if we're going to use layers, we do have to be in the highest subdivision level to add a new layer to this. So I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to make this new uh, layer for this and I'm going to give it a name and I'll call this one pose to as well. And I'll hit enter for this. We're already in this recording mode. Once the layer is made, you're free to go up and down in your subdivision level. So I'm going to hit shift D to drop down into my uh, subdivision levels. You can see the layer grays out, but if we tap D to go back up to the highest subdivision level, this becomes available again. So just kind of know that that's going to happen and don't, uh, don't really worry about it too much while you're working in this mode. So how this is going to work is basically through a series of masking on the model. Um, you saw how we were just using the move tool before and we can move the entire thing, but we're going to want to move, rotate, and scale our object and um, be able to have only a certain part of it actually move. So what kind of works well for this, if you have it on the select rectangle, so if I hold down uh, control and shift and I click in here, you can see here's our different ways that we can select. We've got the select rectangle and we can do the select lasso. Let's use the select lasso for this and you can see we could drag out something like this. We could use the visibility of this. We could hold down control and just click and that would mask that part out. We can hold down control and shift, click again and we would want the inverse of this so we can hit control I. That's one way of doing it. Um, I'm going to hold down control and shift and then bring back our regular select rectangle. The other thing is we could straight up paint um, a mask on here. So we can hold down control and just paint a mask on here. That's a possibility for us as well. Now we can hit control I for that. So you could paint that. You can also hold down control and you can get a different mask type in here where we could use a mask lasso. So if that works better for you, you can hold down control and drag out a mask like this, right? So I'm trying to get that arm isolated. I'll hit control I. Now we've got this part of the arm isolated like this here. So now, because I have this uh, kind of built up the way that I want, I'm going to um, put this on the rotate tool. So I'll just click here. You can see our transpose line is going to be off where it was the last time we used it. So we just click and drag out a new line. So I'm going to treat this as if this was a bone that I'm making in here. So we do need to set the location of where the elbow would be. So I can click and drag this outer circle, which you see here, and get it roughly about in this position here. And then I'll rotate my model, and you can see I can reposition this outer circle here to get it closer to where maybe the wrist would be. And if we looked from the back of this character, we can click this outer circle here, and then drag this to get the elbow a little bit closer to where it would be. So if you accidentally click on the model and it makes a new transpose line, you're going to have to draw it out again and set this up. It is one of the things that kind of annoys me with this tool, but um, it's pretty easy to just click and redraw this thing out. So once this is set up, how we can use this um, as a rotation, if we click and drag this one, it would use this as a rotation point. If we click and drag here, it's going to use this part as a rotation point. So I'm going to hit undo real quick because this is a way that you can kind of test the deformation of this thing. It is deforming in a way that I don't really want. I want the elbow to be held a bit tighter. So I can hold down um, control. I'm just going to put it on my standard brush so we can go B, S, and then find uh, your standard brush within here, right here. Um, I have a hotkey set up for that, so I'm just clicking on that. 
I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna take it off this uh, this uh, lasso tool and put it on by mask pen so I can actually just paint on here the mask. So I'm gonna hold down control and paint on here. And if we need to take anything away, we can hold down control and alt, take that out like this. I think this part was moving quite a bit and you can see it was intersecting with this a lot. So I'm gonna hold down control and paint this out a little bit. Now, if you ever need to soften your mask, you can hold down control and click on a part of a mask and it'll really soften that thing. I'm gonna hit undo real quick. And if you wanna harden the mask that you're drawing, hold down control and alt and then click and it will harden up the mask. It's gonna be really hard to see in this mode because the geometry is so low, like what we have here. So once we've got that set, now we can put this right back on our rotate tool and we have our position set because you know we just went back to edit and it's kind of cool that it holds that position for us. So we can do this work and then now we can kind of rotate this thing a little bit. So I like how it's holding the elbow, but I'm not um, really liking how hard it's holding this area right here. So I'm gonna hold down Control and Alt and just lightly tap there. I'm gonna hit Undo and try to get the distance back a little bit more like this. So it is kind of a finesse kind of thing that you're gonna have to do with this. So you can see we've got this here and depending on how far up I'm going to take that we can get this into position there so if you're happy with the movement we'll go ahead and get rid of this like this um, I've got this one point that looks kind of not really liking the way it looks so we can put it on the move tool so I'll tap B and then M and then we can find the move brush like that and if you take your cursor and make it really small, I'll tap S and drag that down really small, we can grab individual points at that time. And let's make it a little bit larger. And we can pull this thing up like this, right through here. And we can build a very specific shape that we're going for on this. I don't like how it took this point up in here so I'll just kind of click and drag that out a bit more and kind of check around here. And we might take the elbow area and then just drag that thing down a bit more like this. Now, um, we can start stepping up in the subdivision levels and start seeing how this is going to react. So we just tap D and it's going to go step up. This thing's been poly painted so you can see the poly paint information follows and uh, so does the sculpt which is uh, pretty pretty cool. So I'll keep going here and we might have to do some stuff with the sculpt where you can see this kind of is a uh, an unnatural kind of bend here so maybe I'll use the inflate brush so you can tap B and then I and you can find inflate right there like this and I could take this and just kind of lightly tap on there to make it uh, feel as if we're not losing any kind of volume on here like that and I might just hold down shift and then lightly kind of tap on there so that's pretty heavy-handed if I hold on shift I can take this intensity and drop it down pretty low and then that way I can kind of get this to where I want it to be. So now I can tap D and keep stepping up in the uh, subdivision levels. Tap D again and we're at the highest subdivision level now. So it is possible we could um, we could leave it kind of how it is like this. Um, you know it's it's kind of up to you how far you want to push this thing. So I'm going to tap U and then get this slider for intensity, drop it pretty low for the inflate, and then have this stuff run into each other a little bit more in through here. And then since I am using poly paint, if I smooth, I don't want it to mess with any of the poly painting information. So if I hold on shift, I can turn RGB off and it won't affect the poly paint. It'll just affect the model that you see here. So I'm going to hold down shift and then kind of just paint on here. I'm going to maybe increase the intensity of that a little bit more right through there. And so I think that's looking pretty good. And maybe I'll take the move brush like this 
and I'm going to kind of just pull this elbow area out a little bit more like that and maybe check this uh, muscle here so you do kind of want to think about you know how how will the uh, body react if it is doing this type of movement um, you know if the bicep might pull up a little bit more in this area maybe bulge out just a little bit and I just want to make sure I'm not introducing any kind of weird wobble with that and I can pull this area back just a little bit because as the bicep moves up this area kind of thins out just a little he's got really long arms so um, and might just pull the back of the tricep out just a little bit okay so here is this new movement that we have and again it's on a layer so it's possible that we can just take it out of recording mode and we can turn this thing on and off and you can kind of check the motion for that so you're gonna have to go through the same process for uh, any part of the model that you want to uh, kind of pose out one thing I do want to show you before we take out of this little section that we're in is how to use the transpose tool to help with masking so if you turn on your polyframe you can kind of see the geometry flow of this model um, if you hold down control while you drag out an action line normally you would just click and drag an action line out I'm going to move it off to the side here but if I hold down control it looks at the model and it tries to analyze that and build a mask based off of the uh, flow of the model so you can see here it's um, masking this part of the hand depending on the uh, complexity of the model it might take longer for it to kind of get finished doing its uh, thing that it's doing and uh, so that's why I would suggest taking it and dropping it into the lowest subdivision levels while you're working with this stuff so I'm gonna hold down control click and drag on the open viewport and that'll get rid of the mask here real quick um, so let's drop down I'm gonna hit shift D and we'll just drop down a little bit in the subdivision level so now we can look at the geo it's still fairly high and now if I take this thing and put it on any of the transpose tools and then hold down control and click and drag out you can see it's gonna update this thing a lot faster right and so I could hold down control and drag it up from this way like this if we wanted to kind of get the neck area we can click and drag from here like this and again I'll take it off the transpose tool once I've got this kind of mask kind of set I can hold down control and click on this and it really um, smooths that out so if you wanted to do something like we're going to uh, move the head let's take a look at an action line on this real quick uh, I'll put it on rotate I'll click and drag out something for the neck and I'm doing that from the side I'll have to position this thing to make sure it is actually running down somewhat the center of the neck like this okay and that works and I can click and drag this to do the rotation thing um, I can tell the mask is um, still pretty strong for what I'm wanting to do with this so I can hold down control and then click on it I actually want to get rid of some of this so I'm going to hold down control and alt and then paint some of that out and then smooth the results out of this thing and now I can put it on the rotate tool um, after it does its uh, I've got an auto save so sorry about that I'll finish that thing up so now whenever I click and drag this and move it you can see this is the type of behavior that I'm getting again it all kind of depends on what do you how do you want this thing to look right um, and I can move this a little bit here so you you, you might have a lot um, of time that's just spent on sitting there and finessing the mask and how this thing is kind of deforming the model um, but it's worth the time to uh, make sure you, if you've taken a lot of time to sculpt this thing you know definitely take the time to actually uh, pose it the other thing I want to show you with this rotate tool that's kind of cool um, you're seeing you can use these end points here as like pivot points to rotate now it's possible that we can spin something around this axis we click and drag here and we can go left and right and that'll give you a twisting motion so with this thing let's say I want to move the head over here like this 
and then now I can kind of take this thing here and maybe I want to rotate it more from this point like that um, but really now that I've done that I'm gonna hold down control and build up a mask a little bit higher on this to hold this area a bit harder and now I can kind of rotate this this thing around here a little bit more we could also put on move and then you can slightly move it if you want to do that as well so it's probably gonna be a, a combination of you uh, rotating and um, moving the thing so again when we're done we can step it up in our subdivision levels like this and you can see we're gonna be on that layer and we can uh, turn the layer on and off like this okay so that's um, some a little bit more complex posing the next part that we're going to look at is using a tool a plugin called transpose master where we can not only move just one piece like the body we can move everything together because you can see if we've got something like this on and we uh, turn on some of the different pieces for it this piece no longer follows this thing the sub tool so this tool that we'll be looking at will actually take everything and kind of combine it together as one model and you'll be able to move everything together as uh, one kind of big piece okay so let's take a look at this transpose tool we're gonna go into the Z plugins area and just go ahead and dock this by clicking this little icon right here and that's going to dock this over to the side then we're gonna open up this uh, tool that you see here in this area called transpose master and whatever we have visible within our uh, stack that we have for our subtools is going to be what is used for uh, this tool. So you can see I've got the body and all of his accessories and I also have this staff that I want to use. And I've hidden everything else uh, in the uh, subtool stack. And so I just click this T-Pose Mesh button and what it's going to do is going to look at all the different models that I have visible drop them down to the lowest subdivision level that it can possibly drop it down to and then it's going to form a brand new model uh, for us based off of all these different subtools that we have so it's going to combine it all into one model you can see it's going to make this uh, flat gray shaded version it's going to take this new model and it throws it into the model trough over here and the other thing is if we turn on the polyframe it's going to uh, make automatic polygon groups for each one of the subtools. So this makes it pretty easy for us to select things with. So one of the functionalities of the transpose tool, if we put it on something like the move tool, if you hold down control and just click on one of these pieces, it will automatically mask everything else uh, but that poly group. So that becomes pretty handy. Say I want to move this, this necklace piece here, I can hold down control and then click on that and then mask everything else out. So I'm going to hold down control, click back on that staff, and I'll just drag this uh, action line out holding shift, and then I'll move it forward right about here, and then I will take this staff and then just push it off to the side, maybe over here a little bit. And then I'll start working on something like the arm and trying to uh, get that thing to uh, rotate up towards that thing. So again we can hold down control and then click and then drag out and I'm going to try to do something where I'm masking out most of the arm and going into the shoulder a little bit like that I'll put it on draw and I'll click uh, control I to invert my mask for this and so what I'm trying to do is get this arm isolated to where I can put a rotation point somewhere right up in here like this like, let's just imagine we had some kind of bone running from the shoulder down to the wrist or something like that um, I'm going to hold down control and shift and then isolate just the body and I'm going to hold down control and alt and then remove some of this mask that we have on here it feels pretty heavy-handed for this so I'm gonna try to uh, reduce the opacity of this a little bit right there and hold down control and click and smooth that out just a little I think I want to hold this area and through here a bit more like that and I think that should be pretty good so I'm gonna hold down control and shift click and bring everything bell, uh, back out on here and it looks like we need to uh, get some of these other pieces 
and hold them. So it's pretty easy to hold on control and shift and just click on this piece that we have maybe here like this and if you hold down control and click in the open viewport it'll automatically mask whatever is visible like that so if I bring everything back I can uh, do the same thing for the backpack hold down control and just tap the open viewport like that hold down control and shift click again and you can see that whole thing's been masked like that um, I'm doing that because this stuff sits pretty close to the shoulder I might want to do this for this necklace piece as well and just mask that thing and then now I can just hold down control and then click and drag out a mask and quickly mask off these other pieces like this here and I also need to mask off the staff and anything you see here like this so I'm gonna hold on control and shift click on that click and while I'm holding down control in here masking that control shift click to bring everything back and I'll make sure I've got the eyes completely masked off and then the head one thing that's kinda cool is if you click and drag out the mask you can uh, while you're holding down control add the spacebar modifier and you can uh, move that selection around that's pretty helpful as well um, so now I'll just go ahead and test this thing out and uh, I'm just trying to fix any part that I'm missing here. It'll be really apparent what you've missed uh, if we start to uh, rotate this thing. So I'll put it back on the rotate. We've already got our action line that we drew out and now I can click and drag the arm. And so that feels like it's working pretty good. I think I want to move this rotation point back just a little bit on here. And this thing does snap to uh, geometry so maybe if I get in a little closer I was hoping it would maybe not do this snapping action for me um, and this is uh, gonna just have to draw this out again so again this is part of my frustration with this tool is that uh, you know I kind of messed up and I have to just kind of redraw that line that you see there and it is wanting to snap to these uh, these vertices on here so I'm just gonna click and drag that thing up right about here and um, the next part is going to be actually just taking this thing and I want to mask this part out like that and then we want to bend the arm up to match the staff a little bit better I was going to put this back on the rotate tool and then click and drag out from here to about here and then fix this up to make sure it's in about the right location for where the elbow would be and then maybe where the wrist would sit and then uh, click and drag this thing up to match this a little bit better like this the other thing that I need to do is uh, I need to build a little bit of twist in through here so I'm gonna hold down control and build this thing up to about here and then hold down control and click on this to soften the mask I want to hold all this really tight and through here but I want a nice gradient fall off from here back like this so whenever I set this thing up and we do that twist through here I'm gonna make sure that's running down the center of the arm like this and we definitely need to check it from different angles and that looks pretty good so now I got it on rotate and I'm gonna click and drag here to do the the rotation the twist uh, that I'm looking for on this so in the interest of time I'm gonna put this in uh, a time-lapse mode and you'll go and see the rest of this process for um, posing this character out
right, now that we have our model posed out, it's time for us to go ahead and transfer all this uh, movement that we've added into the actual high res sculpt that we have. So again, we're just into the uh, plugin area. We're using the Transpose Master tool. This created this Transpose Mesh that you see here. Now we've got this uh, mesh in place, and we can click this button, T-Pose to Subtools. But what I'm going to do is enable this layer uh, option, which will create uh, new layers for us on each one of the pieces, and it'll actually store this new pose in layers that you're able to turn on and off. So for me, that's a better option just because um, you know I, I want the ability to go from this neutral state to the pose state as well. So we'll just go ahead and click this T-Pose, the subtool, and it's going to go through and again take all of our pieces, drop them down to the low subdivision level, and then apply uh, the layer and this new movement to the mesh. And when it's done, you should be able to see the uh, mesh in its new position. So we'll just go ahead and let it run through. Okay, when it's done, it actually pops up pretty quickly, a little dialog box to tell you uh, how much time it actually took to transfer everything. I can take it off the poly frame here, and now we can see this uh, new position that we've got for our character. So with this working method, again, everything is kind of stored on these layers. So if we go to our body here and we go to the layers, you should see a new layer and it's uh, not going to give it a name. Um, it's going to give it this untitled layer. But if you want to do additional sculpting on this, just go ahead and click on the record button and then you can go through and then do any fine tuning and finessing to each one of the pieces that you might want to kind of fix up on here. So, you know, if I wanted to kind of work a little bit more on the fingers and kind of have that work a little bit better, I could go ahead and do that. But this um, is looking pretty good for me for what I want to do for this example. And uh, this will conclude um, us taking a look at how to pose our models inside of ZBrush. There is one final thing that I do want to say, and that is uh, with this uh, T-Pose mesh that we're working on here, this one here is what we had. At the very initial stage, before we even started posing this thing, it would have been possible for us to use Gozi and kick this out to another program like Maya, and then you could have done the posing work inside of Maya. So if you want to get a scenario where you can actually get uh, an actual skeleton in here with skin weighting and everything else like that, you can actually do that work inside of Maya, and then you can transfer this uh, you know, the new updated pose that you have from Maya, you can export that as an OBJ and then import it over the top of itself with this T-Pose mesh and then click this T-Pose to Subtools and it'll still go through the same process. So it's up to you if you want to use ZBrush and do the work for the posing or if you want to use another program and then uh, update all your high-res meshes based off of that new position that you have.